This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm joined by the man who's the only person at the moment in Jeddah that everyone travelled for the right, that got a direct flight. Lucky man. Mate, I am so fresh, it's unreal. Everyone I've spoke to has been doing like 24 hours, 26 hours, 28 hours, stopping here, stopping Turkey, stopping everywhere. And there's me, mate. I'm like, what's the problem? Six hour flight, direct, straight in. Had the best meal I've ever had on a plane, by the way. I had a bolty chicken with rice. It was insane. Better than what you get in an Indian shop. It was like, yeah, I don't know what the, all the problem is. In bed early, up training this morning, feel fresh, and everyone's walking around like zombies. You're flying at the moment. Um, yeah, hopefully we see some uh, leather flying on Saturday night. How do you see this going? A lot of people make Usyk the heavy favourite. How do you see it? Listen, you can't, you, you can't not make Usyk the overwhelming favourite going into this fight. But Joshua recognises that. He recognises what he got wrong. But it's whether he can overcome that psychological damage. Because, you know, if we go back to the first fight, it, Joshua was the overwhelming favourite. He went in there, tactically got it totally wrong. And I think from the third round when he got tagged, he sort of lost heart in himself a little bit. And he was standing off more. And he allowed Usyk to get into a rhythm. And as you know, and as you know, we followed Usyk all his career going back to the amateurs. When that guy gets into a rhythm, he's very difficult to beat. You can't allow that to happen. You've got to take the game away from him. Joshua didn't do that. So it's whether he can overcome that psychological damage from the first fight because Usyk will take off from where he left off. Joshua's one that's got to do all the adjustments. We're at the open workouts here and these don't normally mean anything anymore. But today they do because, you know, there's been reports that Usyk's going to come in 15 kilos heavier or I think it'll be 15 pounds as opposed to 15 kilos but we've heard 15 kilos heavier so what's he looking for the knockout but does that play in Joshua's hands because in case he plants his feet a little bit more I don't think he will but what I'm saying is Joshua's meant to be looking very slim as well so I think for me it'll be just having a look at the guys I'll have a better idea of what their game plan's going to be because I think look Joshua's got the tools to be able to win this fight but I don't know whether he can implement that. I don't know if it, you know if he's got psycholo psychological damage from the first fight. So if he can implement what he needs to do, which he says he needs to do, and that's go in there and use educated pressure, take Usyk out of a ri his rhythm and land one of those shots that he's got, he's explosive. And I'll tell you what, Joshua's got that power where his elite level heavyweight power where you're at ringside and you know yourself, when he lands that shot, you feel the vibration on the floor. It's like, it's something different to other heavyweights. He's got that power. So if he can catch Usyk, Usyk will stay caught. But it's a big if and it's a big ask because he's coming off the back of that defeat. And guess what? When you do that ring walk and the spotlights go, that's where you remember from. You remember that last fight. Things start, demons start creeping in. So he's got a lot to overcome. He'd done it against Andy Ruiz Jr. He adapted. He stacked the game plan, but this time he's got to revert back to what he knows best. He's got to be prepared to take one to land one. Do you know what I mean? Or take two to land one. And that's when that's when we're going to find out whether he can do it or not. It's the first time he gets tagged. When he gets tagged, his reaction. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's, a, it's still a very interesting fight, this one. There's been a lot of talk, by the way, that old AJ, if he... Um, you know, if he loses this fight, his, fight, his career's over, he's done. And look, that's not the case at all. He's still very much in the mix. He, just rec he won't retire after this if he loses, by the way. Not saying he's going to lose, but he won't retire after this. I just think he'll go back to the drawing board again. The Usyk is a tricky southpaw. A tricky southpaw. And he's a tough guy to beat who knows his way around the ring. But let's just see how it all pans out. Like it, Today's going to be a big telling moment for us to have a look at how they are and then speaking to them afterwards when we do the interviews after you're going to see how edgy they are how focused they both are Usyk you know he's got a lot going into this one as well like he tried to buy the TV rights for, for, for um, the Ukraine going into this fight so they could all watch it for free the Saudis kindly gifted it to him so that tells you like he's on another level he was at war for his country they released him to come and do this fight so he's He's a passionate guy, mate, he's, and that's going to give him an extra drive. People are saying, well, does that add extra pressure to him? No, champions feed off pressure. And he's a champion. He's like, not just a champion, he's an elite champion. So, yes, I don't really know how this one's going to pan out until we see both guys and speak to him through the week, but it's a big ask for Joshua going into this. It is. It's a massive ask, you know, knowing 
knowing that that was his last fight and the, the manner that he got beat as well. It weren't like he just got turned over. He got beat and slowly and surely got, got systematically broken up, really. Away from the tactics uh, side of things of this fight, um, of course, it's London Sky Sports box office. Um, Joshua announced he's done a long-term uh, deal with the zone. This fight was outside that deal. So, uh, yeah, as a sort of Sky man, you have been for a long time. I know now you're actually working with Talk Sport and Boxer. But, yeah, happy to see this on Sky Sports box office. I think it's good for the fight fans. You know, so I think the more people will watch it, obviously, because more people have got this platform. Sky is, you know, it's easy to press the red button when you're at home and watch the fight. You know, whereas the zone's a little bit more complicated. It's, it's, it's built more for the younger generation. It's, it's an app. You know, it's difficult to get on your TV, etc. So look, for fight fans, I'm pleased that it's on Sky. I really am. I'm pleased it's gone back there because more people are going to see it. More eyeballs are going to see it. Um, yeah, it was, it was crazy, really, that, that they'd done that deal with with um, the zone and. Then the Saudis bought the TV rights and, and Sky got, got it from them. Yeah, it was all it was all a little bit bizarre, if I'm honest. But look, it's on Sky. It's a great platform. I'm pleased it's on there. And um, also, you know, it's free to listen to on TalkSport, mate. Saturday night from 8 p.m. It's free. So if you don't want to pay your money, you're feeling a little bit tight and you don't really want to splash out your 27 quid, get on TalkSport, listen to it for free. Myself, Adam Catterall, um, Gareth A. Davis, um, we're all on there. I think Derek Chisora's even making a little appearance, so there you go. I'm sure Adam Smith would say, get your 27 quid out Saturday night. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm just saying there's people out there are finding it a little bit tight at the moment. So talk sport, if you, if you don't want to do, if you don't want to you know, watch the fight, and you want to listen to it. We, I mean, we're doing, we're doing hits all through the week. We're, here, we, we're busy all through the week, but the fight is free to listen to on Saturday night. Last one, uh, great to see uh, Ben Whitaker on the card making his uh, second professional fight. So pleased, mate. I'm going to be doing some stuff for Boxer while I'm out here as well. Um, I'm doing, going to be doing some stuff with Ben Whitaker, who, by the way, he's not just going to be a world champion, he's going to be the next superstar of British boxing. Without a doubt, love or hate him, the kid can fight. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased that, he, that he's got, they've got him on this bill. Um, looking forward to that. It's a great bill, actually. We've got Callum Smith on there as well, and Hergovic is on there. It's a good undercard. Normally, a fight of this magnitude, you get a pretty weak undercard, but actually, it's a good undercard. I've heard Johnny Nelson's going to fight Usyk after the main event as well. So. Well, yeah, listen, I think that, yeah, Johnny Nelson, after his comments about Andy Joshua, <laughs> maybe retiring if he loses this fight he might be fighting, fighting AJ next who knows <laughs> yeah, both of them Spencer Oliver thank you very much for your time and uh, yeah the only man in Jeddah with a bit of energy this week absolutely mate listen let's do some more man I'm buzzing <laughs> yeah my dad in the street against a heavyweight I've gone back to the dad I've punched him a few more times five blokes outside my front door you coming out one hell of a fucking story so stay tuned Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.